Once upon a time, the bodyboard was thought of as just a child's toy, but no more. If you're a hardcore rider, you're well aware that the bodyboard can be a mind machine, taking you to new places on, within, and above the wave. To help you reach those amazing places is a crew of amazing riders. Mike Stewart, Pat Caldwell, Jack Lindholm, and well, yours truly, J.P. Patterson. Together we'll dissect and explain some of the most common intermediate and advanced maneuvers in modern bodyboarding. So grab your board, we're going bodyboarding. Okay, what you want to do in taking a steep drop in any um, type of wave is that you drive, you, you kick as hard as you can, keeping your feet in the water, not flapping your fins too hard. Just trying to drive, keeping your little strokes, fast strokes, driving down the face, pushing down on the nose with your, with your hands, and not too much, otherwise you might pearl or something like that. Come down to the bottom, your first maneuver is gonna be your bottom turn. Lean over on your side, let's say if I'm going left, put a little pressure um, on your left leg, apply a little pressure, set the rail, give a little lean, and project into your turn. When you take off on big waves, you just gotta go for it. You can't hold back at all. You have to get in early, stroke, get over the over the lip, start taking that drop, looking ahead so that you can see any anything that's coming up, you can read it and, and uh, prepare for it. When you're taking the drop is, is the ideal time to set up for your next move because you've got the whole wave laid out in front of you. Same thing, reading the wave, watching what's coming up. Pat Caldwell doing a little side slip on the drop, reading the wave in front of him. Setting up for his maneuvers. Here we have Mike Stewart, kicking hard, not hesitating at all, dropping in, pulling in. Okay, to perform a good rollo, um, you should have a lot of speed from your bottom turn and usually perform it in a hollow section. Uh, right where the wave is just about ready to pitch over past vertical is the section I look for. What I do is I bottom turn off the um, bottom of the face, turn up the face, look to exactly where the lip is going to hit, aim for that area and hit it. And the push from the wave itself will actually catapults you outward like that. And it's, it's a really natural, it's a really natural move because it's with the flow of the, the energies. Depending on the type of roll that you want to do, you can alter the angle at which you approach the lip. A more vertical approach will probably pitch you out a little bit further. A less vertical approach and more down the line will set you up for um, more of in the tube kind of a rollo.
Here, Pat Caldwell goes down the line a bit and utilizes it uh, to land back on the face. In larger surf, you're going to have more speed and you'll be able to do, uh, the maneuver will come a little bit more natural. In smaller waves, you're going to have to twist a little bit more. Okay, there's a lot of different variations to the rollo. One is one would be the rollo takeoff. Another one would be a, a little bit deeper in the tube, which is actually riding the wave in the tube and falling back into the bottom of the wave. You use a little bit less up the face momentum and a little bit more turning in the barrel or the tube. So you want to go up maybe halfway and kind of relax. You don't want to just hit it really hard. You kind of want to relax and ride the, ride the face of it and ride it down. You want to kind of release right into this area and land. And you should land from close to the bottom of the wave in the, in the tube. Um, another one is the roll takeoff, which can be done paddling out towards the oncoming wave breaking. And if, um, if you hit the maneuver in the same location as you would a regular roll right where the lip is starting to pitch. And what you want to do is paddle up the face and kind of put the board out more and let it take you over as opposed to being on it with a lot of speed. Even roller takeoffs have many variations. In this situation, Jack almost falls sideways in the tube and still pulls it off, somehow generating a lot of speed from nowhere. To do a cutback 360 or a cutback um, belly spinner, as it sometimes is called, you want to go into the initial cutback as you would just a regular cutback, which is kind of riding on the tail of this corner of the board and holding it up in the direction you're going. And you cut back as you would a regular one, and when you get back in the direction facing towards the oncoming wave, you want to slide up on the board. And what will happen is the force from your initial turn will have a tendency to swing out the back or the your fins, your uh, your legs, out in the direction where you want to spin. It's a very natural maneuver. You cut back, move up in the board, and you swing out, and you end up going back the way you're initially going when you um, cut the way. It's helpful when learning to do a cutback 360 to go into the cutback and maybe put your hand in the water, raise your feet, and spin around. Engage your feet and you're off. After you get a little bit more proficient with these cutback 360s, you can try initiating the spin without using your hands. To do a drop knee stance, I'd recommend a longer than average board, just by a couple inches. It makes a big difference for stability. And also for fins, I'd recommend one of the smaller fins make it easier to put your leg up. To catch a wave, drop knee stance. You paddle for the wave, and positioning and timing is all important. And you make sure you have the wave before you get, get up on the stance. And then you get up in one fluid motion, put your, your knee up with one knee down. Like I'm goofy foot, so it would be my right leg up. If you're a natural foot or regular foot, it would be your left leg up. And then from there, you just project yourself, and there's nothing touching the water. It's a feeling of total freedom. 
And so you just project down the line, down the wall of the wave, and you go into your bottom turn or whatever trick you feel like doing. Right in the drop knee stance, I feel it's functional because you can use your arms. Your arms are free to help you in doing turns and balancing. And your legs, you can use for pumping the board. And there's nothing dragging. So you can build up a lot of speed drop knee stance. And if you want to do a drop knee a rollo, you it's um, you have to choose the right wave. Like you have to really concentrate, and you you kind of go into it late when the, when the wave is just about to pitch. You project yourself up the lip, up the wave into the air, and try to get as high as you can, almost even out of the wave, and grab both rails with your hands. And in midair, you switch to the prone position and bring it down. You flip over and land in the prone position. That's the trick to doing the drop knee a rollo as it is now. But I think the, the next frontier would be if you could land drop knee without going to your stomach. Being six foot three, it's, it's kind of hard for me to stand up. It took me about four or five months to learn how to stand up. But this is kind of how I, I learned how. What I do is I stagger my arms like this, allowing, since I'm goofy foot, I'll be putting my back foot up first. I'll stagger my arms like this. And what I'll do is I'll lift up into a push up and actually put my back foot and swing my front foot up. So I'm staggered on the board like this. And because there's no fins on the bottom, you have to uh, counterbalance your feet from one side to the other. Same with drop kneeing. You have a knee on the inside of your rail and your front foot is on your outside rail in order to compensate for your weight on the inside in this kind of a motion.
um, he's usually done with a lot of speed. You have to have a lot of speed to um, go into one of these maneuvers. You bottom turn as you would to do a rollo or any other maneuver off the lip, but instead of arcing or turning off the top, you actually project out further, imagining the lip maybe another two or three feet off the wave. Uh, there's two directions you usually go in, the, in air, and that's either up and down or outward. Uh, you usually get most air hitting the lip and going outward. When approaching the lip to do an aerial, imagine the lip being a few feet further than it actually is. This will kind of project you out further. Keep your eye on the spot you decide to land on, and your board will naturally follow that arc. Extend your board away from you as you come in for the landing, and it will reduce the impact. And you can retain your speed and go on to the next maneuver. By watching the lip of the um, breaking wave in the hollow section, you can determine how fast you need to go through the tube. If it's a short wall or uh, one that seems to be coming down or arcing or bowling a little bit uh, closer to you, uh, you don't need as much speed to make it through it. If it's a long wall that has a long uh, shearing lip, you're going to need a lot more speed to go through it. Um, and there's basically two positions to get into them. One would be where you stall into it if it's hollow, kind of lifting up the board or going out and then turning into it, or um, the long walled one where you're just going to be riding in your speed position or trimming. Your trim speed is probably the most important factor in tube riding. Uh, depending on how long the tube is or how short it is, you can alter your trim speed for the um, specific situation. In really deep tubes, it's especially important to keep your eye at the end of the tunnel and just kind of have a desire to, to make it out of it. Otherwise, you just lose hope and faith back there and it probably won't come out. In small waves, you're going to have to squeeze tight, contorting your body to into a smaller position. Here you see J.P. Patterson kind of making his body into an angle to fit the, the angle of the tube. And here again, I lean really tight on this bowling barrel. Here you can see JP kind of stalling to stay deep in the tube by lifting up on the nose of his board, controlling his speed just to get as deep as he wants to. Here Jack Lindholm uses his drop knee style and drags his hand in the water lifts the nose of his board up a bit and leans back to stall for the tube. From experience I can tell what this way is going to do. I stall a little bit to get deep and then I move right into the speed position come out with a spit.
Uh, style in bodyboarding for me is uh, going with the flow of things. Uh, maneuvers that uh, are flashy should be done on, on waves or situations that are kind of flashy themselves. Hollow waves, you're harnessing uh, the energy and uh, redirecting it. In small waves, you're kind of generating the speed. Style in general is something that you, you have to pick up yourself. And it happens after you refine the maneuvers, the, the basic maneuvers, and get that foundation built up. As soon as you have that foundation, you start getting into the more refined aspects of bodyboarding, and, and that's when style comes in. Every ride can be broken down into its fundamental parts, but it's the style that really ties it together. Ideally, maneuvers will flow one into the other. On this wave in particular, uh, it was a little bit more of a peak, so I decided to stall and wait until the wave would catch up with me. I'm bottom turning here, halfway down the face, and kind of lifting up the front of my board to slow down. Uh, waiting for the wave to kind of catch me up and encase me. This wave uh, really spit hard, which means a mist in air got blown out from the pressure in there. Hi, Mom. 
Uh, I looked at it looked like a good way for another maneuver, and this one I went for a through the lip rollo, which uh, turned out to be a pretty good decision. Landing with the exploding white water kind of breaks uh, the impact or kind of reduces the impact on your board. It's kind of like a, a real soft landing when you land on the white water. Uh, this way it looked to me like it wasn't going to pitch out and not tube so I kind of went out a little bit further extending my bottom turn into the flats a little bit more and uh, going around the section and hoping that the inside would uh, reform into a, a hollower section. I turned up high into the face of this wave to gain a little bit speed almost overcompensated there which uh, I had to drop almost vertical back down into the into the wave but it did uh, reform into a nice little um, hollow section on the inside so I went into a high speed positioning again kind of trying to make the section and at this point it looks like it's going to close out, so I kind of turn out towards the beach uh, to avoid the, the closing closing out lip. Turning back into it, I see it's a good section to go for a, a belly spinner off off the top. So I shift my weight up to the forward of the board and just kind of let the momentum take me around. and dig my feet back in and it looks like it's going to close out so I decide to duck duck out of here kind of just actually diving into it Okay, and this, it's a very important in small waves to generate as much speed as possible. Uh, in this wave, I particularly uh, try to go for a rollo. Bottom turning, looking for where I'm going to hit the lip, and just kind of arcing up towards the lip, letting the force of the bottom turn draw you up the face, and the force of the lip to kind of pitch you out and continue the rotation. I twist a little there and let the lip uh, push me outwards. Um, landing on the white water where it kind of actually explodes cushions your landing um, it's it's always important I feel to look for the next maneuver possible here you'll see I'm kind of bottom turning trying to get some speed and go around this next section looking for a more hollow section or uh, at least a section where I could perform something Um, try, uh, right here I'm trying to generate some speed moving up on the board and, and actually pumping the board trying to cut down the resistance and go into a cutback and immediately into a belly spinner the key is um, attaining enough speed and the wave finally peters out so I decide to cut out of the wave I think in the future we're going to see a lot more um, better things coming out of it a lot more professional contests better equipment better uh, you know different different equipment um, just yeah the whole caliber of riding is is yeah, really getting expanding yeah. There's a lot of hit hot kids out there. <laughs> Look at you guys. I know. 
It's hard, very hard to compare getting a gigantic cavernous barrel at pipeline to anything on the planet. Thank <laughs> you.